Welcome to Paleo News, stories from the past for the world today. In this episode, murky secrets of mosasaurs, fish-eating dinosaurs, huge ancient Australians, mysterious and rare insect fossils, and the life and times of a trilobite. But first, a new type of fossil egg discovered in marine deposits from the late Cretaceous of Antarctica is bigger than all known non-avian dinosaur eggs. The 68 million year old egg also differs from dinosaur eggs in the structure of its shell. The egg is collapsed and folded and has a very thin shell similar to that of most living lizards and snakes. But the identity of the animal that laid the egg is unknown. The size and shape are consistent with the skeletal remains of mosasaurs found nearby, and an analysis of 259 snakes and lizards suggests that the egg belonged to an individual that was at least 7 metres long. The researchers hypothesise that such a large egg, with a relatively thin shell, may reflect constraints associated with body shape and the limits of efforts put into reproduction for such large animals. And the researchers also suggest that, given that mosasaurs are thought to give birth to live young, these are vestigial eggs that hatched as soon as they were laid. And while we're talking mosasaurs, news recently that a spectacular mosasaur specimen from Angola in West Africa is going on display at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington. The large skeleton is hung on rods and wires in the museum's basement, and its one metre long jaws are lined with 7.5 centimetre long dagger like teeth. A mother load of mosasaur bones from Angola has been recovered by paleontologists from the Smithsonian since 2005. Other mosasaurs in that collection are preserved alongside teeth from sharks that were scavenging the carcass. A recent study of the brain case of a nearly complete skull of the Spinosaurid irritator from the early Cretaceous of Brazil has shed new light on the question... Did they eat fish? Paleontologists use models built from CT scans of the spaces in the skull that would have been filled with nerves and the brain. Overall, the brain was similar in structure to those of other closely related theropods, but they did note that there were some features that suggest Irritator had the ability to rapidly pitch its head downward in a well-controlled movement. Other features suggest they angled their heads downward at around 45 degrees to reduce interference of the field of vision by the snout. The paleontologists conclude that these features would have been very useful for a fish eater. Jurassic Age dinosaur footprints from old coal mines near Oakey in southwest Queensland are evidence for Australia's largest known carnivorous dinosaur. The footprints were found in the 1950s and 60s. But this new study has revealed details about the ancient track makers. Named Caintopus, the bird-like footprints are 80 centimetres in length. When alive, the maker of the prints would have been comparable in size to other giant theropods known from overseas, such as Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus. Other prints found at the site include those of a small predatory dinosaur and a stegosaur. The discovery of a tiny 50 million year old insect fossil from British Columbia has created a major stir because their closest living relatives are found on the other side of the world. Little is known about nymphids, commonly known as split-footed lacewings, during the period from 65 million years ago to the present. And this is only the fourth specimen in the world for this group during this period. While the fossil record of nymphids extends around the globe, today they are restricted to Australia, New Guinea and possibly the Philippines. Paleontologists hypothesise that this strange distribution may be because nymphids require a frost-free climate and these conditions were more widespread in the past. A study of fossils from the early Cambrian Emu Bay Shale on Kangaroo Island, South Australia has revealed the growth and life of the trilobite Estangia in intimate detail. This site is dominated by trilobites, and Estangia is the most common species there, with more than 600 individuals 
per square metre in some places. The researchers put together a complete growth series of Estangia and have noted that the different sections of the animal developed at different rates and that there were increases in the number of segments as the animal grew older. That's it from this edition of Paleo News. For more info on these stories and more stories from the prehistoric past, visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube for future editions of Paleo News and sign up as a patron on Patreon to get your news ahead of the pack.